In this video, I'm going to be talking about the one thing that no one seems to be discussing about biodiesel. Let's get into it. When I was doing RV transport earlier this year, I was driving through a lot of Midwestern states that have biodiesel blends up to 20%. And Ford tells you that trucks and you know vehicles that they make that are diesel can take up to 20% biodiesel. You just might have to change your oil and your fuel filters more often, okay? Okay, I had an issue with my truck where I was getting a code P2459, which is a regen frequency code. My truck at that point had over 160,000 miles, so I was like, okay, I should probably just replace the DPF pressure sensor, or my DPF is completely pooched and I'm gonna have to get a new one or do something else more drastic, wink, wink. What it ended up being was not the sensor because I replaced the sensor, things seemed to be fine. I went back out to pick up a load and after filling up in Ohio, I got the same P2459 code. I looked in forums, I talked to PTT with A-Rod, and we weren't sure what it was. Fast forward a couple months later, and I come to find out that biodiesel is terrible for after-treatment systems like DPFs and filters and catalysts because it burns sooty. I don't know what genius <laughs> thought it was a good idea, to have states be able to decide to run biodiesel blends while the EPA at the federal level is mandating emissions control devices. So you have biodiesel blends that are going to potentially cause harm to these catalysts and you're telling people they have to run these emissions filters? Like in what world does that make sense? Okay, so that's kind of the basis for the ramp. But when I went online and went on PowerStroke forums and looked up that code, there was there really wasn't anything conclusive. People were like, oh, it's a phantom code, just reset it, it'll go away, and that's that. But no one had any sort of information on it. I couldn't really find much on YouTube. I think at one point, there was someone who said, oh, it's, it's the DPF pressure sensor, which is what led me to replace that. But after I had replaced that, and the truck threw the code again, it was just wild. And then, you know, obviously, it's fair to think, okay, if it threw the code again, your DPF's probably done. You either need a, DP, a new DPF or you need to get rid of it. And But whenever I was back east in New England, in Vermont, Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and I would fill up, I could go 500, 600 miles without needing to go through a regen cycle. So to me, the biodiesel because it burns dirty, something I corroborated on one of my videos, another video I have that I'll link to with Lake Speed Jr. And that's because of that biodiesel. Like you said, the bio constituent in the fuel is less oxidatively stable. It provides more lubricity for the fuel pumps. That's a bonus. Right. But like in the video that I put out recently about making yeah. motor oil, I actually showed that, you know, just because you have some of the added lubricity, doesn't mean that it's oxidatively stable. It could actually be less stable. And that's exactly what you're seeing here is that, that bio-derived product, they tend to be really good in terms of adding lubricity, but they are not oxidatively stable. That's their weakness. And that's the reason why your oxidation value went down despite a longer drain interval is because now you're not getting all that bio buildup. So the reality is, Using New Hampshire fuel, non-bio-based fuel, you can probably push this even further than if you lived in the Midwest still and you're in right. that farming area where there's bio everything, right? Yeah. You yeah. Know, all the fuels are bio in the Midwest, you know? It's like burning two-stroke in your diesel and it's filling up the filter way faster. So my purpose of making this video and the fact that I had trouble myself diagnosing this and finding information is if you're getting that P2459, chances are it's because you're running biodiesel and the truck can't handle it. And it was at this point that in my zeal to prove my point, I completely misrepresented a government study. So because of my error, I completely retracted that video and added this bit 
to that old video and am re-uploading it for you to watch. I do apologize again for the misinformation. I should have done a better job reading the full study and not just glossing through the abstract and the executive summary. That was my mistake, and I hope you'll watch the rest of the video. Basically, in the previous version of this video, I had said, hey, look, there's a government study that points to the fact that biodiesel increases regen frequency. What that study was actually testing and what it proved was that biodiesel, at least in the lab, increases the rate of a passive regen, meaning that in a passive regen, biodiesel actually increases the rate of the burn. So like decreases the time and it also lowered the ignition temperature required to burn that off. So what the study was actually saying was that biodiesel would reduce the strain on a catalyst. Now, in that study, they were using something called BP-15, which I don't think is a readily available biodiesel blend. It's not like B-20 or B-15 or B-5 blends. Honestly, if anything, I, I was looking at a couple of the other NREL studies, which I'll link to, like they are really pushing the usage of biodiesel. They even had an article or a, like a press release they did recently in September of 2024 talking about how research points to the opportunity to use blends that are even further than like a B20. They're talking about using like a B50. I think the big issue here is the difference between theory and lab experiments and practical implementation, which the government is terrible at. You have a, you know, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory running a test in a controlled environment with a fuel source that they source and bring in for the test. And then they're making these presumptions that are going to apply to millions of Americans and millions of diesel truck owners and companies. And they're doing that by like dyno testing an engine with biodiesel in a lab. What I think the actual issue is, is like, yes, in theory, biodiesel has some good detergents in it. It's better for your fuel pump. But in practice, biodiesel is very unstable when stored over a period of time compared to regular diesel fuel. I think it's just the implementation, you know, like, you know, these fuel companies are supposed to treat the biodiesel with antioxidants to prevent um, the accumulation of water. They're supposed to do all this extra stuff to stabilize the biodiesel. And I just don't think that's happening. And so the biodiesel that you're buying, by the time it makes it to the truck stop and gets in those tanks, it's junk. And before anyone's like, well, it's because you're filling up at a little gas station and they don't have high flow pumps. All I fill up at is high flow pumps. And honestly, as soon as I get to states that run biodiesel, it doesn't matter if it's high flow or if it's just a little gas station, the fuel quality is junk. Typically when I was hauling trailers cross country, I had a fuel discount card for loves and the open roads fuel discount card. And I would only fill up at Love's and I would only go through the big truck pumps and it didn't matter. You know, as soon as I got to Ohio and filled up, it just like, it's like guaranteed P2459. So at the end of the day, you know, the choice is yours. If you are gonna run biodiesel, just be aware that you could get that code. The other thing that's really interesting is while the government is saying it's okay, Ford is saying you can run biodiesel, but that immediately puts your truck into severe service, severe duty, meaning that you need to cut all the maintenance intervals for things like oil in half. So yeah, it's pretty crazy to me that like Ford has even recognized, hey, you know, even though the government's saying biodiesel is this like great new invention and that it'll help your DPF and all this crap, in practice, it's not good for your truck. You need to treat your truck like it's in severe duty. So the thing about biodiesel that no one is talking about is the fact that while it's terrible for our vehicles, it's being pushed on us by the federal government and state governments. There were a few folks that mentioned this renewable diesel that seems to be really good and really efficient. 
stay away from biodiesel when you can. If you have to use it, just be aware that you could get a code and you're going to see the truck go through more regen cycles. And obviously, if you don't have a DPF, I would still stay away from it because it doesn't do well in long-term storage and it just doesn't burn that efficiently. So, I mean, it's just not great for your engine, period, end of story, based on my experience, which completely contradicts the governments. But then again, what do they know?